Thank you so much, Maura. October 22nd to 30th, identified as Unity Week across the ACC as we get set to kick off the final game of the ACC Women's Soccer regular season from Alumni Stadium in South Bend, Indiana, with number four, Notre Dame hosting number 11, Duke. It's our ACC Network primetime matchup and with a lot of moving pieces in the ACC tonight. Here's what we know about our two teams. Yes, they are going to the ACC tournament, but Notre Dame with a win tonight has a chance to claim a share of the regular season title. Duke with a win could earn the right to host in Sunday's first round. Jen Hildreth, Lori Lindsay, so glad to have you along for the ride for this one. And speaking of along for the ride, what a great season it has been once again <laughs> in the ACC. So competitive as we would expect. And even though we know our two teams are going to the ACC tournament, still a lot at stake tonight. Yeah, it certainly is. And, and this is a big statement game for both of these teams. For Notre Dame, they're looking for their first win against Duke since 2015. And then for Duke, they're looking for their first win against a top 10 team this season. Well, one thing they both have going for them are some top-notch goal scorers. In fact, the top two in the ACC on the field tonight. Let's start with number one, Michelle Cooper from uh, Duke. And my goodness, she's been dominant in every aspect of the game. She can score, she can assist. She leads the ACC with 11 goals, nine assists, and she draws so much attention to herself. So tonight is going to be about holding up the play and allowing for others to join into the attack quickly. Yeah, she had the game winner in overtime against Notre Dame last year. But for the Irish, how good has Olivia Wingate been? And she's been most dangerous when she gets in behind back line. She has 11 goals as well. But tonight is going to be about driving at the back line, picking the ball up deep, and then reading the play early on to see where she can exploit the back three that Duke's going to employ tonight. A lot for both defenses to handle, for sure, with those two players and more for these teams. And let's get a look at the starting lineups. First for Nate Norman's Fighting Irish. Yeah, they're going to be in their typical 3-5-2. It'll be Gatino that will anchor that back line. She'll be their vocal leader. Van Zanten in front of her will have the ability to play as a two-way midfield, drop deep at times, but also then join into the attack right next to Albert. Eight goals, four assists. She'll look to combine with Wingate and Mercado up top and fill in the gaps. And then for Duke, a little bit of a formation change this tonight. 3-5-2 they're going with. It'll be Chico, which is her third start of the season. Migley and Graham will have license to get forward, but also provide balance to drop into a back four at times. And then Raider up top will have to combine with Cooper. She leads all freshmen with nine goals and two assists. I mentioned that it is Unity Week across the ACC. And see that represented here with our teams, the ACC's Committee for Racial and Social Justice in conjunction with its member institutions declaring this as ACC Unity Week. Everybody getting a moment to catch their breath and get ready for the end of the regular season. How will it end? Where will the chips fall? for Notre Dame and Duke. We find out now the Irish in white on their home field tonight. They start off with the ball. Duke visiting in blue. Expected to see that back three for Notre Dame, Lori, but as you mentioned, looking at the lineups, it is a bit of a, of a shift for Duke. We saw the Blue Devils play with a three back a lot last season. They've done it some this season, but this is a change specifically for this matchup. Yeah, it certainly is, and it's something that Robert Church spoke to us about coming into this game, wanting to go back to the three back. But previous this, previously this season, really it was just Michelle Cooper as the lone striker when they did employ the three back. Now they're going to see two up top with Raider sitting next to her. We'll see how it allows for more players to be able to get into the attack and provide some support to, to Cooper has been so dangerous in all aspects of the game this season. Ati Trezina, unable to keep possession for Notre Dame. A season Notre Dame has had coming in with the number four ranking in the country. Seven and two mark in conference play. They came into the night tied at the top, along with North Carolina and Florida State, North Carolina Tar Heels. 
taking care of business tonight. They got their win. Florida State in action there in the lead. A couple of early goals for the Seminoles. So now can the Irish keep pace and give us something we have never seen before, which would be a three-way tie for first in the regular season in the ACC. Yeah, just looking already at, at Duke, as soon as they try to break out, you see the numbers behind Notre Dame defensively looking to, to press and not allow them to break out on any sort of counterattack. We usually talk about the first 10 to 15 minutes of the games, Jen, but this one really could set the tone. We mentioned in the Open this being a statement game for both of these teams. Robbie Church really looking to see what his team's made out of, the toughness as they head into postseason play. As the Irish getting it into the box first and calling Ruthie Jones into action for Duke. A good look early on from Notre Dame. And for Notre Dame and Nate Norman, it's really about continuing to, to show their intensity, their energy, put teams under pressure that have gotten them to this point so far this season where they have been so difficult to play against. An incredibly difficult schedule for the Duke Blue Devils. This is their sixth top 10 opponent. All four of their losses coming to teams ranked in the top five. And here they go again, another top five team a ranking that Notre Dame has earned in part due to two big time wins against number two Virginia, number three Florida State, both of those on their home field. Maya Hudson started this play. You saw Wingate trying to get onto it. Number nine in white, good one to keep an eye on. This is the player you mentioned making just her third start, Nikki Chico. Will that be an area you see Notre Dame try to attack? Certainly the most inexperienced of that back line for Duke coming into the night. And we'll see how quickly the Notre Dame players can, can recognize that Duke is in a three back. Chico in particular, just getting her third start, as you just mentioned, mentioned Jen. So is that an area that they can exploit early on? I don't think they would have expected Notre Dame, or excuse me, Duke to come out in this three back. And how does that affect the way that they want to attack and really try to play out? Kiki Van Zant, number seven, one of the key players in the midfield for Notre Dame. Five goals, two assists, has started every match this year. Ava Catino, the rock, the center in the back. There's Corbin Albert, she's been on a tear. ACC Offensive Player of the Week, straight up the middle, finding Mercado. Maddie Mercado, a couple of step overs. A little slip in the end. Nate Norman, one of the things when we asked him today where he wanted to see his team improve, and keep in mind, they come in here on a six game winning streak. They haven't conceded a goal in that stretch, and it was just what you were talking about. How quickly can they see what's been given to them and how to take advantage of it. Well, they have so many tools on this team because you can see they want to build out, they want to try to keep possession, but they have the ability to, to go long and, and to play in behind, especially with players like Wingate and Mercado up top. Wingate making a run. Flag stays down. Second leading goal scorer in the ACC this season. Wingate sends it back for Martinez, and in the end, it's just an easy grab for Jones. Ruthie Jones, one of the best all time to wear that goalkeeper jersey. And that is, a, it's a purple. It is a little bit different from the Duke blue that the field players are wearing. But she ranks second in career goals against average. She's a senior this year. Ranks fifth all time with 24 shutouts in her career. Megan Mullen, our referee in the center tonight. Just a little bit of a, a late challenge from Migley as she comes in, gets called for the foul, and don't really expect this to be too much of a disruptive game. Both these teams like to get the ball down, play, move it quickly. All right now, Duke forcing Notre Dame back. This team loves to go, especially in the first few minutes, send a message that they are coming at you. Michelle Cooper finally gets a touch for Duke, but nowhere near the goal she'd like to score on. Well, I think the biggest challenge is for Duke tonight is going to be when to release 
their outside backs, playing the three back, good space right now. Just can't get the pass to be able to find the end target, which was Delaney Garam on that far side. And that's where they have the advantage to be able to release Migley and Graham in those wide areas, Duke. But the challenge will be when they're out of possession, do they recognize quickly enough when they can release those two players to step out, get pressure on the ball, join into the attack? Because it's something that Notre Dame likes to continue to, to throw players forward, commit numbers into the attack. And if Duke gets pinned back into their own half, it's going to be a long night because it's going to be predictable just trying to find Cooper on her own. Albert skipping a hop to get around Jones in the midfield. Sophie Jones, number seven for Duke. And now it's the number seven for Notre Dame, Van Zanten. Back on it for the Irish, edge of the area, tiptoeing her way in. Martinez calling forward to the far side, diagonal ball, finds her the shot, and it is saved. The follow-up chance at the back post, unable to go back on frame, and the Blue Devils take a breath. Well, one of the things that makes this Notre Dame team so difficult to play against that don't get a lot of recognition is their ability for a number of players to drive, dribble at back lines, and it's a nifty little pass from Van Zanten. And then it's Martinez that follows it up in the end. Good initial save from Ruthie Jones, and then an awkward deflection. And you see Olivia Wingate trying to get on the end of it, but just almost jumps too early. Can't make a good contact or good play on it. Murray's seen a number of times, Jen, even just in these opening minutes of, of players, whether it's Gatino out of the back, whether it's Albert or Mercado dropping a little bit deeper, driving at the back line, and, and that's difficult to defend. Most teams are set up to, pa to get into passing lanes, deny penetrative passes, and when you have players running at the back line, you have to have somebody that's going to step up, slow it down, make it predictable for the defenders behind you. We've seen a few opportunities already for Notre Dame to be able to break free just on the dribble. Bad giveaway there from the Blue Devils. Puts it at the feet of Wingate. She looks to lay it off. Keep up that pressure, Let's go. Let's go. Migley can be a danger in the attack when she is given the opportunity to get up there, but it's been a lot of defending for the Blue Devils so far. Emily and Jenna Royson, two sisters, joined together this year on that back line for Duke. Jones tried to give and go along the far side. Delaney Graham, another great speedy option on the outside for the Blue Devils. Look for the quick ball inside. Maggie Graham, her sister. Yep, there's a couple of sets of sisters on this Blue Devil team, unable to make much of it. Good stop there from the Irish defense. Will be a Duke throw. And that's better from the, the Blue Devils. Just getting more players in advanced positions, looking to serve dangerous balls in. And then regaining possession in their own attacking half. This is Kat Rader, the freshman you mentioned, who's been so dangerous for Duke this season. Not this time. She's having a great year, though. Six goals in her last eight, nine on the season to lead all ACC freshmen. can hear Mackenzie Wood in goal, calling out instructions to her back line as the Irish look to attack. Van Zanten has Wingate in the middle. That's where she looks. A little bit of the press that you're getting a glimpse of here from Notre Dame. Something that Nate Norman feels his team can certainly employ to their advantage. His fifth year as head coach told us earlier today he has never beaten Duke. Looking to try to get that done tonight. Feels he has the team to do it. And to claim a share of this ACC regular season title would be the second program history 
The Irish joining the ACC in 2013. They shared the title in 2016 with the Clemson Tigers. Mercado gets it back. Martinez has had some space on this near side. There's a cross, maybe skimming off the crossbar. Notre Dame saying they thought perhaps Ruthie Jones had a touch, the referee not seeing it that way. And I wonder if it was already out of bounds. But the fluidity of the front runners for Notre Dame, so difficult to, to pin down if you're the Duke Blue Devils defensively. You're going to see Mercado that starts that play to find Martinez. She just drops off the front line and picks up the ball and it faces. No one tracks her. And those will be the moments in those central areas where this game could be won or lost for both of the teams. Cooper, as great as she is at scoring goals, boy, she is gifted at finding her teammates as well. You could tell she was looking to play provider in that first attack for the Blue Devils. And really good defending right there from, from Duke, just stepping up, recognizing it's only Wingate up top. Here comes Corbin Albert leading the way. Had it taken off her foot, ball left behind. Devils have a chance to break. Emily Royson gives it up to Raider. Looked like potentially could have been a handball called on Maggie Graham as she went down to the ground, wasn't. Cooper will be closely marked all night. Yeah, and there, there's a handball from Maggie Graham that she gets away with, regardless if it's intentional or not. It still does strike the her hand or arm. You said, Lori, this was an opportunity for each of these teams to really make a statement tonight. You know, Duke has consistently been ranked at or near the top 10 throughout much of this season. Their losses all coming to teams ranked in the top five, four of them. They haven't had that statement win. You look for those in tournament time. Wingate hopped onto the ball, did manage to get a touch to it. They have an opportunity for that tonight. Do maybe see what this team is made of. Do they have enough to get past one of these highly ranked teams? They'll need that in the postseason for sure as we get set for our first corner kick of this match. And Robbie Church in his 22nd season in charge of the Blue Devils knows that. Told us, I want to know, does my team have what it takes? They have a lot that he loves. Do they have the toughness to take down a team like Notre Dame on their home field? We'll see. Corbin Albert has been special on set pieces in her time for the Fighting Irish. First corner kick, no problem for Ruthie Jones. And just going back to the point that you made, Jen, about Robbie Church and, and finding that toughness, it's, it's really about like a ruthlessness on both sides of the ball, committing, getting numbers back behind, but then when they can go forward, committing players into the box. And we've talked time and time again about how special Michelle Cooper is, but that means she draws attention. She has numbers around her, so who else is stepping up? We've also seen Kat Raider, nine goals as a freshman. That leads all freshmen in the ACC. She, incredible season for her, but players coming in underneath, the commitment to, to find a way to win games against some of the top teams is really what Robbie Church is looking for as they head into one of the most pivotal parts of the season. The Blue Devils coming off a much needed win for nothing against Louisville in their senior day. It was a 0-0 draw at Clemson before that and prior to that a match that we saw down in Tallahassee a 5-1 loss at Florida State. So this team that stung. That one stung for a while, and they had a couple days off, but they have had to figure out how to come back for that and, and learn from it. Yeah. 
Ruthie Jones continuing her family's legacy in athletics at Duke. Her brother Daniel, of course, quarterback there in his time before heading to the NFL. Can Cooper get a touch with some space or in a dangerous part of the field? They've been few and far between so far. Leading scorer in the ACC being held at bay. Jenna Royson, transfer from Georgetown. This is her graduate year, was a two-time All-Big East selection in her time with the Hoyas. Irish have had the better of the ball so far in this match. Eight and one on their home field this season. This one took kind of a funky touch. Stays in play. Martinez wanting the corner, she'll get it. And Martinez's positioning has been really good so far in this game, staying wide enough to be an outlet for any sort of through ball or just directly to her feet. It's making life difficult for, for Chico on this near side and earning another day another corner kick, their third of the game so far. Second of the game, excuse me. Let's see what Corbin Albert can draw up from this side. Toward that back post, Scatino always a target. Still a chance in the box, ball on the ground. Duke can't get it clear. It'll fall back to Albert. She tried to keep it on the ground, but doesn't put it on target. Well, the fall seasons are all ending soon, and we'll have three ACC championships for you here on ACCN and the ESPN app for cross country. Well, our coverage of the men's race begins tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, followed by the women's 6K, both from Panorama Farms in Charlottesville. Then on Sunday, you know what's coming. That's our women's soccer championship getting underway with first round matches at 6 and 8 Eastern. And Tuesday, field hockey quarterfinals begin with games at 1, 3.30, and 6 Eastern. Busy but exciting time of the year to be sure. Here is Cooper. First real touch of the game for Mackenzie Wood. Comes into this match. 662 consecutive minutes without a goal. Seven shutouts in a row. Nine on the season. She has been incredible when called upon. But that defense in front of her has done a great job of limiting the work she needs to do. They only allow two and a half shots on goal per game, the Irish. Certainly haven't given the Blue Devils a sniff of anything in the attack yet. And just look how deep right now Michelle Cooper is when she's receiving the ball deep into her own defensive half. And there's three players for Notre Dame immediately around her to deny another outlet pass. And this is where Sophie Jones is going to be an important piece to this game for the Duke Blue Devils, just linking play, making sure they connect their first pass once it is turned over and they win the ball. Migley earning the, the free kick for Duke on this near side. But Sophie Jones really going to have to be the defensive stalwart in those central areas for the Blue Devils and then make sure that she allows for that forward pass to release the pressure to bypass that first line of defense. Katie Groff, junior out of Raleigh, North Carolina, takes it with her left. There is Sophie Jones. Difficult ball to hit correctly by Emily Royson. Did fairly well with it. Wingate, though, is going to beat everybody to this ball. But look who gets back, Delaney Graham. Maybe enough of a presence 
But still, a good quick shot taken. Corner kick number three on the way for the Irish. Well, if you're Duke, that's just too easy. You have three versus one, and Wingate gets to this first. Just understands where the space is, and it's a, a through ball that does have a bit of heaviness on it. Takes Wingate away from a good angle. Always trying to come across her body. It's going to be easy in the end for Ruthie Jones just to deny the opportunity. You do not want to give these chances to the Irish. And this one stopped before it can begin. Contact in the box will give the free kick to the Blue Devils. And with this new formation that Duke has employed for, for a number of games now, it's just going to be about recognizing, can they get pressure on the ball higher up the field? If not, you have to know where your mark is. You have to know where your players are at all time. Because that one ball bypassed two lines and then find Olivia Wingate in behind where she's been the most dangerous striker in the ACC in vertical play this season. Raider out to Delaney Graham. This is a much better spot for Cooper to try to get on the ball, but you have to get it past Catino first. Cooper. Notre Dame winning it, and Albert. No, nope, now it's given up to the Blue Devils. Sophie Jones poked it right through the middle of a couple of defenders, but the Irish first to it. And that's better from Royce in defending going forward. You know, they have a numbers up situation defensively. Take your risks. Blue Devils looking for their first shot on goal in the game. Haven't had one yet. called on that play. Crowd not happy with the lack of a call. Cooper Gatino, great matchup to watch. Gatino falls that time a foul is called on Cooper. This could be a, a really fun matchup between these two players all game. Gatino does put herself in a good position to, to try to win that ball. I'm not so sure. It's much of a foul on Cooper. Well, Duke's been good on the road this season. Mentioned Notre Dame's been good at home, and really they've been good home and away <laughs> with a chance, obviously, to finish in a tie at the top of the ACC regular season standings. Eight and one at home. Duke five, one and one on the road. And they've had to finish their regular season with three of their last four away from Durham. Maybe some chirping going on amongst the players on the field. As we said, there's a lot on the line, and these teams know it. Tonight, Wingate, if that touch had been perfect, would have been dangerous. Martinez, back across it goes. And even though Duke has been good on the road, think what a big difference it could make for the Blue Devils they get an opportunity to host in that first round. So the top two seeds in the ACC 
would get an opportunity to get a bye. They go right to the semifinals. Three and four get to host that first round. Five and six have to travel. You know, we've talked about narrow margins throughout the season, Jen, and that helps with those. When you have a home game, particularly for Duke, when the ACC tournament is in Cary, North Carolina, right down the road, cuts down the travel, especially headed into the NCAA tournament, you want as much momentum, as much Five, kind of little intangibles seven, on your side as possible nine, going into postseason play. A couple of changes for both teams. Ellie Osbeck coming on for Notre Dame. Mackenzie Pluck for Duke. Expected to see Pluck come in relatively early for the Blue Devils, a regular starter most of the season, most of her career, in fact. Grad student this year in business school, three goals, six assists. So she's number 24 in blue, Ospec number five in white. Ospec replaced Drazina out on the wing and Pluck taking the place of the freshman Raider. This is Cooper right about midfield. Ospec took it away from Delaney Graham. Albert, so gifted on the ball. Martinez only needed one touch. Top of the net, though. Throughout the first 20 or so minutes, we talked about Notre Dame having some of the better of the possession employing their, their higher press and intensity that we're often used to see. But it's resulted in opportunities like this that crosses that have just go, gone wanting, not a ton of clear looks for them either. And give a bit of credit to, to Duke defensively. When it's necessary, they've dropped players deep. The big question though will just be about, can they find a way to get more numbers committed forward so they can put some of that pressure, the Duke Blue Devils, on the Notre Dame defense. And we see that right now with Michelle Cooper getting a little bit of space on this near side, earning her team the first corner kick. So the Blue Devils have not been able to generate much through the run of play. Can they find something here on the set piece? Devin Lynch, who's been praised by Robbie Church for her play lately, comes on just before this corner. Only one player there in front of Mackenzie Wood. Now everybody else on the move for the Blue Devils. Gatino so good in the air. Jones headed back toward goal, and Wood with the grab. Feels like this first half really moving. It's about a little under 16 minutes to play in this final game of the ACC women's soccer regular season. We'll try our best to catch you up on all of the action tonight once we get to the half, tell you what we know in terms of regular season finish and seedings and what that means for scenarios for the ACC tournament. So well, we don't know either because there's so much <laughs> math. That we, we don't touch that. I have that double checked by about 20 people. But yes, we will certainly fill you in to the best of our ability. Most games should be final by halftime around the rest of the ACC. And Notre Dame has some odd tie break scenarios not in their favor should they get the win tonight. They'd be tied on points with Florida State, assuming the Seminoles hang on and win their game, and North Carolina. All three of those teams would be tied in points, but Notre Dame would wind up with the three seed most likely. It comes down to goal differential, all kinds of different tie break scenarios. The number crunching people will be crunching. <laughs> because it's an unbalanced season. All those teams did not play each other. That's where things get difficult. Oh, 
Still no score here in South Bend. Notre Dame trying to finish off their regular season with a win on their home field on senior night. Wingate has been kept mostly in check in this match. Osbeck making things happen. A slip by the defender could have had a chance. A shot not on target. Got to make the goalkeeper work in opportunities like that. Yeah, Van Zandt going for glory on that one. Just <laughs> tries to go with power. This needs to look to keep it on frame. As you mentioned, Jen, just test Ruthie Jones. Force her to come up with a save, give up a rebound. There's a slide from Delaney Graham that allows for Ospect, who's coming on as a substitute. I felt like she could have played it across the goal right there. Really tested the back line for Duke. And there's the shot from Vincent in the end. A much better job the last 10 minutes or so from Duke of just recognizing when they can step, put better pressure on Notre Dame, deny them the ability just to be able to play through the center mid or the central areas of the field. First 20 minutes or so, just too easy for them to bypass Duke defensively and it allowed for them to get into more attacking positions with numbers up situations. Notre Dame made two changes. Aaron Honstein, number 10, coming on in the midfield. Katie Coyle, number 22, on the outside. There is Coyle. A little too much contact. And that'll give the ball to the Blue Devils. Well done from Sophie Jones, just getting herself in a position to draw the pressure and then draw the foul. She's been a good outlet throughout this first 45 minutes, just finding and picking, choosing her times when to be the player that's going to relieve a little bit of the pressure. Still not really able to generate a ton out of their build-up play, though, for the Blue Devils in this game. A lot of the play been in the defensive half or even just in the middle third. Just one shot so far in this game for Duke. Six for the Irish. Three of Notre Dame shots have been on goal. But scoreless so far. And just that last play, Jen, I'm just watching the Blue Devils back line. As soon as that ball is played all the way back to Notre Dame's back line, there's no movement from the du Blue Devils defense. They stay exactly where they are. Those are the moments when you can gain ground, squeeze the field, put the players like Michelle Cooper higher up, then be able to employ pressure herself. The Irish thinking they had Earned a corner there through Osbeck, but goal kick the call. Sophia Fisher now coming on. This is a deep Notre Dame team. She replaces Maddie Mercado. No relation, by the way, to Sammy Fisher, who played for Notre Dame. Great career, actually, for the Irish. Three-time All-ACC selection. It's a low line of confrontation right now for Duke, isn't it? Really conceding plenty of space, that back line of the Irish. Well, it's just exactly what we were talking about. You understand why they have Wingate and a special player that's such a threat in behind. Just absorb the ball that Notre Dame's looking to play in behind, and that's been a good tactic. And you see the numbers right now, though. It's four versus two. Well done from Michelle Cooper to be able to find that the wide area. It's something that we haven't really seen from the Duke Blue Devils in this game so far, utilizing their wide players, getting them to, in advanced positions. And that's something that Robbie Church said coming into this game that he felt like they had an advantage in. They've been, been pinned back defensively throughout this first half. Give a lot of credit to the Notre Dame defense too on that last play. That was one of those patented Michelle Cooper turns. And that's one of the things Nate Norman said, we've got to read her body language when she turns like that. That turn eliminated Gatino immediately, but then you looked up and you think, okay, Gatino's out of the picture. 
There's two, three more Irish defenders already filling that gap behind, not giving Cooper a chance to go to goal. <laughs> We've said it a few times, the word ruthless, but that's what I think of when I think about Notre Dame on both sides of the ball. They're committed as a team to get numbers back, and, and they knew coming into this game that Michelle Cooper was going to be a handful, but so was the players coming in underneath her, Raider, Graham potentially. They're going to have to deal with all of those players, and they've been tuned in so far this entire match. I do feel like it's going to be a talking point, though, for Robbie Church at halftime when they can gain ground. I mentioned a second ago the back line not moving when the ball is played negatively by Notre Dame. Having to recognize that early, understand where they can gain ground, eliminate some of the useless running that they have to do, especially for these wide players like Migley, who's on the ball now. Those are the players you want in the advanced position. Serve balls in, get players into the box. An opportunity here. Delaney Graham keeps it on the ground right around the penalty spot. It sneaks through to three Blue Devil players. Doesn't find a target. And a great look from, from Duke in the attack. And then they regain possession early on. They have more players in the advanced positions. Well, Red to be able to get players higher up the field and utilize the width. Royson looking direct to Cooper. One touch, a shot, and Michelle Cooper shows why she's so special. Duke taking the lead, the ACC's number one goal scorer. Giving the Blue Devils the advantage here late in the first half. And Michelle Cooper is just so dangerous when she gets in and around the box. This is really the first time in this game that we've seen Michelle Cooper take a first time touch out of the air, has a little bit of space to run onto it, and then look what she does. Just tucks that into the far post. What an excellent strike from the, the front runner for her 12th goal of the season. That's a league lead in the ACC. So dominant, almost against a run of play for the Duke Blue Devils. Fantastic strike to put them up one zero away from home. The assist coming from the back line and Jenna Royson. Duke, while they do like to possess, can be a bit more direct at times, but that play right there would have resulted in, who knows, maybe not much, but Cooper, the way she quickly took her touch, set herself up and then rockets it into the goal. But all the credit of the positioning of Duke defensively, because then they're able to regain possession higher up the field. One time ball into Michelle Cooper had made a good run. Excellent first touch to set herself up. And then, my goodness, what a strike from the sophomore. First assist of the season for Jenna Royson as well. First goal that Notre Dame has conceded since September 25th. Mentioned they're on a six game winning streak. One that has seen them outscore their opponents 16 to nothing. It's the first goal Mackenzie Wood has conceded since September 15th. As Ashley Naylor has also spent some time in goal for the Irish this season. Is there an answer to be had from the Irish? Good numbers in the box here. Duke Blue Devils, as most teams do, gain confidence after a score. Ashley Zagay, number 21, grad transfer from Nebraska, came on for Van Zant in the midfield. She was hit on the play, and if you want a way to equalize, well, this is one way to try to set yourself up to do it. Corbin Albert has been dynamite. Three goals directly off of free kicks this season, including each of the last two games. And this, this is about the spot. Oh, 
Albert, not this time. And it was good position though from Ruthie Jones. There's a couple of those opportunities from Corbin to give it up on the near post. Ruthie Jones just slides over a bit. Her frame of, of six foot, it'd be difficult to, to beat. Final four and a half minutes on the clock for our first half. Ruthie Jones, Duke Blue Devils taking the lead in the 38th minute through Michelle Cooper. I'm not so sure most people watching this first half would feel that one nothing scoreline is really deserved. Not a lot of offensive opportunities for Duke, just two shots in the game, but they made one of them count. And when you have a special player like Michelle Cooper that can turn games with just limited touches, but also just the recognition of, of Duke defensively when they can step up, get more players than the attack, and it, it showed that paid off because it allowed for Michelle Cooper to be in those central areas, higher up the field, and her worker magic. Blue Devils unbeaten when scoring first this season. The regular season no longer in Duke's grasp with some of the other results that have happened tonight, but if they can hang on for the win, could be big for where that first round matchup gets played. They'd love to host it at home. Ball intercepted by Aspect. Wingate still lurking around the center of the field in the attack. Will be a foul on Zagay. It was a one nothing scoreline between these two teams when they met a year ago in Durham. Michelle Cooper had the game winner in overtime back when we had overtime in the regular season. Flag came up, so that would have stopped Wingate from making a run. He even had that ball set up for her. First offside call of the match. Olivia Migley, one goal, four assists on the season. Has a goal or assist in five of the last eight for the Blue Devils. Michelle Cooper has had to have some other people step up and score, but it's been her tonight so far. Only one for either team to put the ball in the back of the net. much better just adjustments from Duke Blue Devils because now we're starting to see them get into a rhythm, put some pressure higher up the field, then they win it back once it is played long from Notre Dame. And then you start to see their players and the understanding of them being able to find some rhythm, find some time on the ball. And we really didn't see in the first 20 minutes with them being so pinned back and then so deep in their own defensive half. Duke playing with some confidence and the lead. Notre Dame has yet to come back and win when they have conceded first this season. That will be the challenge for the Irish in the second half as they trail number 11 Duke, one nothing at the end of our first 45.
Michelle Cooper, so special. Such a handful, didn't get a lot of touches in dangerous spaces in this first half, but she shows you why she doesn't necessarily need too many to make a difference. I think anybody, though, feels comfortable with a one-goal lead, so Duke, see how they come out and prepare for the second half. Get a chance to talk to Robbie Church here in just a few moments when we get him on the headset. And all smiles on the face for Michelle Cooper. And what a handful she's been all season, but it's really been fun to watch her with the adjustments she has to make, knowing that a lot of teams are double teaming, triple teaming her, and how she's continued to adjust her game to get more players involved, how she works with players. Well, we do now have Duke head coach Robbie Church joining us. Robbie, can you tell us a little bit about some of the adjustments you made as this first half went on? You know, I, I think we, we didn't hold the ball early. We, we turned the ball over, maybe played a little bit too fast. Um, what we want to try to do is, you know, we're, we're not going to make, we're not going to overplay in our half of the field, but when we get in their half of the field, we want to keep the ball. And that's what we did on the goal. What a, what a great goal. What an absolutely fantastic goal. You know, we, we had a, a, a bunch of passes, got out of got out of an area, changed the area, came back, and then Michelle does what she does. Um, and just a, just a you know class finish class finish so you know again I, I think i love what we're doing i think we're very aggressive in the back we got stretched a little bit we closed that gap I, we've got to do a better job of winning second balls so that we can play in their half of the field and once we get in their half of the field we want to keep the ball it's not always about going to the goal it's you know if we have an opportunity and we have our numbers we can get forward we go to goal if not let's spin out and hold the ball and set up what we call our ring and keep the ball in possession and keep the ball in possession and, and change the point. I think we need to see continue to get numbers in the box and um, you know I think we've, we've carried out our game plan really well first half. Yeah well but, I think we just got a good preview there of your halftime speech so we appreciate your time Robbie. We'll you let got you the go. headset on the right way so we're you know <laughs> everything's looking up for you. There we go. <laughs> Things are getting better. You guys can stay you guys can stay for the second half okay. All right good. All right well we'll Thanks. let you go to your team. Thank you so much. Thank Robbie you. Church's Duke Blue Devils in the lead thanks to what you would have to certainly consider an ACC Player of the Year candidate in Michelle Cooper. One score, one nothing, our score at the half. The ACC's Committee for Racial and Social Justice in conjunction with its member institutions have identified October 22nd through 30th as ACC Unity Week. That is, as we wrap up the ACC regular season tonight, we are at Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish trailing Duke by a goal after the first half. We're now joined by Notre Dame head coach Nate Norman. Okay, Nate, tell us about the talk at halftime here and what you guys need to do in the second half. I think we just need to be a little more dangerous when we get into, you know, that final third of the field. I think we got around their box a lot. We need to get shots off. We need to get balls across their goal. We need to get hard runs. Um, those are the biggest, biggest things. And obviously dealing with Michelle Cooper, I mean, what a goal she just scored. Well, we thank you so much for giving us a few minutes. Best of luck in the second half. All right. Thanks, guys. Well, Michelle Cooper certainly proving to be a handful, scoring the game's only goal in the 38th minute. Her ACC leading 12th goal of the season will be enough for the Blue Devils to pick up a big statement win on the road at number four, Notre Dame. It'll be Duke to start with the ball in the second half. Jen Hildreth, Lori Lindsley, happy to have you with us in our ACC Network Thursday night primetime matchup. What a run we have had. Top five team, at least one top five team in each of our last five primetime matchups. Yeah, and so much credit to these players, the team. I mean, such fun games to watch, teams to watch, and just a lot of credit to the league as well. ACC considered the best conference in the nation and showing us why week in and week out, such competitive games. Yeah, I think even just the notion that we could have a three-way tie at the top if Notre Dame does find a way to come back and win this match. That's something that has never happened in the history of this conference. Still up for grabs for the Irish, a chance to claim a share of that ACC regular season title.
Kiki Van Zanten. Jamaican international, number seven in the middle of the field for Notre Dame, gets it out wide. Didn't see Leah Klinke get up into the attack very much in the first half from that back line. She does so this time, gets it back for Notre Dame. Falls for Albert. Cooper picking it up deep, met by Van Zanten. Anaya Hudson, part of that three back for the Irish. Olivia Wingate, know what a threat she is, number nine in the middle for Notre Dame. Hudson will come up to take the throw. Has a nice long throw at her disposal. Senior out of Greece, New York, gets it in, and Duke gets it out. One of the tests pretty much every team must know that they can overcome is a deficit. So far, this great season Notre Dame has had, they have not been able to do that. Can they find a way tonight? Kati Drazina gets around Graham, bouncing around. <laughs> Klinky again being very aggressive from that back line, getting it forward. Crosses with the left header attempt. Not on target, but a good early look here to start the second half for Notre Dame. Well, that's better commitment from Notre Dame to get into the box, serve balls in, something that Nate Norman just spoke about right at the beginning of this half. Committing numbers forward, being more dangerous in front. Nearly try to sneak one in off a dangerous service from the wide area. And, you know, when you think about this being a statement game for both of these teams, and building confidence going into the postseason. Both of these teams know that they're in to the ACC tournament. For Duke, it's about holding on to this lead, beating a top 10 team. And then for Notre Dame, it's about trying to beat Duke since the first time since 2015, but also coming back from being down a goal, fighting their way through, finding ways to, to get an equalizer, maybe a go-ahead goal. Just the smallest little details that will help both of these teams, either way, headed into an important time in the season. Corbin Albert's been on a tear, ACC Offensive Player of the Week. Ball is brought down. Tackle, was there a foul? Yes, there was. Notre Dame's gonna get a chance to tie it from the penalty spot. Well, the first five minutes have been all Notre Dame, much like they started the game, pinning Duke in. And it is a clear foul on Royson from Duke. Just gets a too tight against Mercado. And then Mercado does well to spin Royson. Royson finds herself in an upright position and does nothing except pull her down. Can't do anything with that body positioning. And it looks like it's going to be Albert that's going to step up to the penalty spot, take this one. Corbin Albert one for one from the spot on the season. That one coming in the last game on the road at Wake Forest. Corbin Albert for the tie. She gets it. New game for Notre Dame. And it's the, the sophomore Albert just steps up for her ninth goal of the year. Here's the penalty kick on Mercado. Does well to get herself in between Royson and the ball. Looks to spin, draws a foul, and then talk about a statement from Albert. Just steps up, 
Ruthie Jones goes one way, the ball goes the other, and the game's tied 1-1. His opening few minutes of the second half. And as you like to say, Jen, game on. Game on. <laughs> we got it back now. And all that confidence, a little comfort maybe Duke had with the lead evaporated with just their second penalty kick conceded all season. And Mercado, who earned that penalty, had been pushing. She'd really been getting it on the attack, creating some good opportunities even prior to that foul being called. And it's some of those times when you have to recognize who you're playing against if you're Royson, just giving her a little bit of space. If she's gonna try to spin, then you have enough room to be able to make the play cleanly. This gets too tight. And credit to Mercado, just understanding where the pressure is and utilizing that to her advantage to get low against an upright Royson. Then has nothing to do but to bring her down in the box. Michelle Cooper's charge forward thwarted by the Irish defense. Van Zant breaks free to Mercado. Two defenders trying to hem Mercado in. No seem to be had. Sophie Jones wins it. Mackenzie Pluck on the field to start the second half for the Blue Devils. Did not start the game, but a ton of experience for Pluck. A regular starter does get the start in the second half. Looks like Kat Raider is the player on the bench. The freshman should provide a good spark for the Blue Devils when she does come in. Wingate, quick shot, too high. Well, here's our week nine college football lineup for Saturday on ACCN and the ESPN app. Florida State hosting Georgia Tech at noon Eastern. Then it is number 10, Wake Forest. Demon Deacons have won three straight there in Louisville to take on the Cardinals. And the day is capped off by our ACCN primetime matchup. Pittsburgh squaring off against number 21, North Carolina who sit atop the Coastal Division. All games right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Maggie Graham kept after it, kept it alive for Duke. Pay close attention here, those few minutes after any sort of a stoppage, halftime, a goal, always so important. How does each team handle it? And this is really much the way Notre Dame started the game, on the front foot, putting Duke under some pressure, playing in their attacking third. Van Zanten cuts to her right. Sees an opening on the far side. Ball back toward the goal. Good glove by Ruthie Jones. Well, we saw Van Zanten also in the first half be such a nuisance getting on the ball, helping dictate the tempo. We talk about her being a two-way player. She can drop deep at times, but also get into more advanced positions. She just pops out wide, finds a little bit of space, and allows her to run at that back line on that last opportunity. Good recognition to, to find the wide area on the opposite side. And it's that fluidity up top, whether it's Van Zanten, Mercado switching positions, Albert getting higher up next to Wingate. Here is Wingate. If she had that turn, she was gone. The referee saying it was played cleanly by Nikki Chico. Yeah, I think Nikki Chico might have gotten away with a little bit of a tug there on Wingate. The one difference though, that we're seeing with the Duke Blue Devils in this half is not getting pinned back. You see the foul on Michelle Cooper, and you can hear the crowd not okay with the calls. They feel like... Well, back to back, those are two that are probably hard to take if you're a Notre Dame fan. Yeah, and, and somewhat similar. And here's a last foul, and 
So that one was called a foul against Notre Dame. This one not called a foul against Chico. Is there a case to be had there? Now that you see it again, what do you think? I kind of like the no call from the referee because there is going to be some physicality. We talked about neither of these teams looking to, to just foul and disrupt, so allow the players to have some physicality. But if you're not going to call that one, then you got to let the one with Michelle Cooper go as well because there wasn't enough on that, in my opinion, to be called as a foul either. And Duke opting not to look direct to goal off the free kick opportunity. They try to reset and build with possession instead. Now they're stuck in the corner, but it's knocked out over the end line and they will get a corner first of the second half. The Blue Devils had just one corner kick opportunity in the first. Yeah. Veteran Mackenzie Pluck. More games played in Duke history than anyone else sends it in. Michelle Cooper just waiting for that ball to bounce. Teammates trying to win it in the air for her. Couldn't get it done. Notre Dame good defensively on that possession. And I think the one thing that we've seen differently from Duke in this second half compared to the start of the game, we are seeing Notre Dame continue to push players forward, show that intensity that we're used to seeing. But Duke's done a good job of, of maintaining their balance and not dropping too deep too quickly with five players. With only Wingate up top, they are leaving the three back to deal with her and, and drop when it's necessary to deal with her ability to get in behind. We saw much of that first half, though, so deep from the Blue Devils and all five backs, even if it's just Wingate up top. No need to have that many players back against one for Notre Dame. Even though that one is oh, certainly no a doubt, threat. No doubt. <laughs> if but Wingate one, does get going, it's trouble <laughs> behind that back line. But one way you negate Wingate. Service. And also, yeah, get players higher up the field, deny that ball in behind for sure. Duke playing for an opportunity to host in the first round on Sunday. Notre Dame trying to play for a share of that regular season title. Wingate. And a corner kick coming for the Irish. Their first of the second half, three in the first half for Notre Dame. High lofted ball toward the back post. Duke won it first. It's picked up by Notre Dame on the ground. Hard shot. It was Van Zanten who took the shot, but Ruthie Jones with the save. Yeah, good hold from Ruthie Jones because there was traffic coming through. It's Van Zanten again that gets through. And this is a low, hard shot through players. Difficult for Ruthie Jones to see, but does well to keep a hold of it, not give up the rebound. Now, the reason, by the way, I do not give a one or two seed as an option for Notre Dame, technically, technically, it still is. However, some pretty significant goal differential would have to come into play for the Irish to surpass North Carolina and Florida State for one of those top two spots. So they are going to have to play on Sunday. Top two teams don't. They get a bye to the semifinals in the ACC tournament. Bottom four of that top six. They do play on Sunday. So Notre Dame at this point 
would be looking at the opportunity to play right here on their home field. Duke hoping for the same thing if they can get a result here tonight. For me to best simplify what's at stake for you, that's the way to do it. Wingate takes it over right around midfield. Holds it up, waits for some support. Martinez streaming down the far side. It's a tough ball for the Blue Devil defense to handle, and they wind up putting it out for a corner. The more set piece opportunities you give to Corbin Albert, the more you gamble with the scoreline if you're an opponent of Notre Dame. Albert's penalty kick tying this match up in the 50th minute. Here comes the corner. There's a miss in the air by Duke. Probably threw everybody off a little bit. And so since no one touched it, it's a Duke throw. second half, Jen. Both teams willing to commit players forward, try to disrupt in terms of their positioning defensively, stepping up a bit higher up the field, and especially from the Duke Blue Devils side, looking to put more numbers forward, see if they can pick off the balls higher up the field than we really did see in the first half. Chico making her third start of the season tonight. Looking to connect with the Blue Devil players in the attack. Nothing doing, well played by Notre Dame. Rosina on her senior night, final game of the regular season for all ACC women's teams around the conference tonight. All the other matches are complete. We will have that final field set at the conclusion of this match. We know the top six, just not entirely sure of the order just yet. Give you a quick look if current results hold. So that would count this as a tie. Here is what things would look like at the moment for the ACC championship starting on Sunday. A Virginia Duke matchup would be a good one. Notre Dame would get to take on Pitt. Look for a little rematch. Revenge against the Panthers. Notre Dame losing to Pitt earlier this season. And we'll continue to keep you updated on what those ACC championship matchups look like. You stick around after the game once everything's complete. We'll tell you for sure what those games will be, getting you set for the postseason in the ACC.
This ball could bounce favorably. Drazina coming in on it, takes her time. Her shot kick save by Jones. Still alive. Good hustle there from Klinky, <laughs> trying to keep it in. The freshman out of Houston, Texas, couldn't quite do it. Well, all the Duke defense had been sucked over, and it left Drazina wide open. Good commitment, though, to make their way back. Royson tries to cut down the angle, and it's a big kick save from Ruthie Jones to keep this game tied at one, and another good look from the Irish. And both of these teams committed to sending players forward looking to see if they can utilize their front runners, find a little bit of space. Michelle Cooper looks like she's the one that's called for the offside on the other end. Just the first called against the Blue Devils in this match. Boy, Notre Dame just looks hungry, don't they? Continue to attack, put the pressure on this Duke back line at midfield. Cooper says, let's go. Plays it into space. Mackenzie Pluck, one-on-one -on -one now. Takes it with her left, bouncing ball, not too difficult in the end for Mackenzie Wood. And that's when I think she has to find like a Maggie Graham that's starting into the box. But Mackenzie Pluck has been a bright spot to this Duke team coming off the bench. This is a player that's started a lot of games, but also been utilized as a substitute and really has given Duke a bit of a, a lift as she's come in and then started this, this second half as well, running at the back line and just being another outlet outside of Michelle Cooper up top. I think it will be interesting though when Raider comes into this match, assuming she is healthy and available, didn't see anything that would suggest otherwise from that first half because the freshman has been such another dynamic piece in the attack for Duke. Curious to see what that looks like if and when it does happen. Looks like it might be about to. Looking over at the Duke sideline. Good quick touch there from Lady Matriano. Back to Gatino for service. Drazina the volley. Wingate might have overcooked that leap just a little bit. There's a chance for Mercado to turn. She does. Was given a little cushion there by Sophie Jones. But remember, the Mikado turn in the box is what led to the penalty kick for Albert that tied this match in the 50th minute. Van Zanten gets away. Albert. It's going to be a tough ask to have her get the ball back with the kind of pressure she was under. You know, we talked about it in the first half, Jen, and it's worth mentioning again, this. This Notre Dame team does such a good job of understanding when, if the pass isn't on, then they'll go themselves. And that's players in the back, that's players up top. They'll dribble out of pressure. And it puts the opposition in some precarious positions. They force a number of players to try to get behind the ball if they were Duke and then relieve pressure. And then it's Notre Dame that regains it and then earns this free kick in another dangerous area from Albert. Albert looking to connect a little deeper starting spot for that free kick than some of the others where she has scored directly from the set piece. This could be Michelle Cooper time if she can bring it down well. Tries to chip instead. It is just tipped over. Wonderful idea from Cooper. Wonderful save from Wood. And as we saw in the first half, only needs two touches to be able to find the back of the net. This time, just a heads up play, gets it down, gets her head up, sees Mackenzie Wood off her line, and looks to work another bit of magic to try to flight that over. Well done for Mackenzie Wood to keep her feet moving. That is a strong right hand just to push it over the crossbar and keep it out of the back of the net.
A little bit of confusion there at the beginning. Now Duke ready to send it through. Might have gone off the back of a Blue Devil player. Good field sense, though, from Cooper to realize there was an opportunity, and she hit it well. And, and it's not easy because sometimes she's up top and she's isolated or hasn't had a lot of run of the ball. And, and sometimes front runners they get frustrated because they want the ball to their feet, they want the ball in behind. This one is on the feet. It is Cat Raider who's come into the match for Duke Raider. The freshman fires it home, and the Blue Devils back in front. And Jen, you asked the question moments ago, what it was gonna look like if Raider comes in, but look at that ball in behind. I initially thought she should have kept her run going just to cut off the defender for Notre Dame. It says decides to cut back. There's an initial ball in that bypasses, but heads up play from Raider just to cut against the grain, give herself a little bit more time, and then keeps this one low, fires it through the legs of Klinke to find the back of the net pass Wood to put the Blue Devils up two to one. What a great finish for the freshman for her 10th of the season. Yeah, 10th of the season, seventh Lori in the last nine games for Cat Raider, who makes an immediate impact coming back in off the bench. And I mentioned early on about the difference in this half compared to the start of the second, even though they conceded a goal on the penalty kick for, for Duke. But they stepped up their pressure. They've committed to getting numbers forward, reading the play quicker of understanding when they can squeeze the game. And it's led to opportunities like that last goal to put them up two to one. More players in advanced position so they could start to affect the game earlier on in the attack once the ball does turn over. And you saw what they can do. It's a great ball in behind to Raider, who had made the run initially to get past the Notre Dame defense. And really a, a good performance on both sides for both of these teams. And we talked about it, Jen. A statement game, and we're seeing it regardless of what the outcome is. Albert! And a slip from Jones! And Corbin Albert says, we're And it just takes a moment. It's a ball from Van Zanten that allows for Albert to get, her, get herself free. And it's a deflection off a Duke defender. We'll see it at the last second here. I'm trying to see who it actually takes the deflection off. It might be Chico, but it's one way. Ruthie Jones is going, can't get her feet corrected to try to make the play in the end. And Albert tucks it in off the deflection from the Blue Devils to tie the game 2-2. What a game. Corbin Albert with the brace. For Notre Dame, back-to-back -back games with two goals now for Albert, a super sophomore for the Irish. Raider trying to get Gatino to commit one way or the other. Offside flag does come up there against Lynch. Yeah, understandable of what Raider was trying to do, just to slip Lynch through, but the, the play that was on was on the far side. Keep the ball moving. 1v1 with a goalkeeper would if that ball had found its way. Notre Dame trying to claim a share of the ACC regular season title and make history for the first time ever seeing three teams tie at the top of the regular season in ACC women's soccer. Duke trying to make sure they can get Another game on their home field in the first round on Sunday, if they can get a win. And the point I was trying to make, Jim, before this ended up being a bit of a goal fest, <laughs> <laughs> was regardless of what the outcome of this game is, this game sets both of these teams up for a lot of success going in to the postseason play because you can understand little areas and details that you need to improve upon going into postseason, but also should give them a lot of confidence. You can score. You can play high-level teams. 
both of these coaches searching to see what their team was all about in these moments. Really fun game. They should be full of confidence with the excitement of this game. And Van Zanten's going to win another dangerous free kick. That would most likely be Albert that's going to take this and look to play this in behind. But what a half Van Zanten's had. Been in the heart and soul in the central parts of the field, drawing the foul. He's getting on the end of balls, running at the back line, looking to play the final pass as well. So what do you think? Is this Corbin Albert territory to go on her own a little too far? Are we looking hat trick here? She is. I like it. Why not? You've got some really good confidence. You've had a good game if you're Albert and you're going to go yourself. But we said it in the first half, it's always going to be a bit difficult with Ruthie Jones sitting at six foot tall and just her range that she has to be beaten from that distance. Fifteen minutes and some change to see if we can get a winner. No overtime in the regular season in college soccer this season. It's coming though. Postseason is almost here, so everybody get ready. And it's a changed overtime. No more golden goal, much to my chagrin anyway. I always thought that was a very exciting way for college soccer to play in overtime, but it'll be two set periods as physical play continuing on. The Irish living up to the name, fighting. They've come back to tie it twice after conceding to the Blue Devils in this one. Mercado coming back on the field. Remember, you are allowed a re-entry in college soccer in the second half. So especially a team like Notre Dame that feels it has great depth and uses their bench a lot. You'll see probably a lot of in and out for these last 15 minutes, 14 now. Shots heavily in favor of the home team, 14 to five. Notre Dame out shooting Duke in the match. Nine of those shots going on goal. Six saves for Ruthie Jones. Mercado fresh off the bench for Notre Dame. Edge of the area, turns it back around, uses her left. And that's better from Royson. Just continuing to keep her feet moving, giving Mercado a little bit of space to be able to drive at the back line, but not too much where she gets spun, and then it's easy to be able to, to spin and, and bypass Royson. Drazina back in the match at the moment, replacing Martinez for Notre Dame. There have been some short spurts around the goals, certainly where it feels like Duke has had some momentum, but for the most part tonight, I think you'd have to feel like it has been Notre Dame playing the game they want to play, putting the pressure on Duke. They've come from behind, as I mentioned a couple of times. Can they do enough to find a win? And it's something that we've heard Nate Norman speak about a lot throughout the season, playing the game that they want to play Focusing on themselves, yes. Osbeck on the far side, using her speed, gets the corner. Yes, being mindful of, of what other teams bring to the table, but really taking the game to them, and we're seeing that. Pushing numbers forward, intensity in the way that they want to attack. Utilizing their bench to be able to get players on, keep it fresh, and they've been a fun team to watch all season long, Fighting Irish. Another corner for Corbin Albert. Gatino, and that just bounces to Jones. Not even sure she maybe saw it until no, the last you, minute. I think you're exactly right. I think she saw it, it late, and it's a smart play from Gatino. Just a screen, almost let this one go for. Well, she wins the header, but then it's Wingate that almost just lets it go past to see, tries to make the touch on it. Can't get anything on it as she opens up her body, but regardless, dangerous and last minute grab and hold from Ruthie Jones. There's been a few that Jones has seen late in this game, but it's done well to keep a hold of him. Oh, 
Ball taken away. Crowd urging the Irish on. Wingate, second leading scorer in the ACC, loses it out of bounds. I'm not so sure what Sophie Jones is arguing about. It looked like a clear handball to me. <laughs> it did. <laughs> Gatino strikes it. Well, it was a bit of an odd play on both sides. <laughs> but on we go, about 10 minutes to play. We showed you what the bracket would look like for the ACC tournament if we remain tied. A few minutes ago, you can see Notre Dame in the three seed taking on Pitt, and Duke in the five seed taking on Virginia. I want to say one nothing game in the regular season with the Blue Devils losing to the Cavaliers. And Notre Dame, as I mentioned before, Really one of their worst performances of the season, losing 3-1 at home, their only home loss to Pitt. Cooper. Mercado, great vision to see the space, put the ball where it needs to go. Big switch back to Drazina. Van Zanten had the assist on Albert's most recent goal in the 73rd minute. First goal coming from the penalty spot from Albert. Up and over, that's not allowed. And we inch ever closer to a more dangerous look from the set piece for Corbin Albert in Notre Dame. And, and those are the little details I'm talking about heading into postseason play. For Duke in particular, we'll just want to clean up knowing that you have a player back to goal. She's not going anywhere. No need to foul, especially with somebody like Corbin Albert and her ability. This is much more of her range. If she can get this up and down with enough bend and pace on it, has the ability to be able to, to strike this and, and find the back of the net. Albert. Nearly got another one. She has scored from a free kick the last two matches and three times on the season. And it gives a little bit of a glimpse. This time she opts to go far post. Just gets more pace on it than Ben as it bypasses the, the wall. Doesn't send that one too far wide of the goal. And, but it just shows the danger of what she can bring in these set pieces and why it's important if you're a Blue Devil just to stand up your defender or your attacker, excuse me. You don't need to, you don't need to foul in those moments. The Irish on the attack again. Wingate through two defenders. But forced into a pretty difficult angle. Ruthie Jones clearing everybody out. Van Zanten. you give an awful lot of credit to this Notre Dame team, and you've talked about how good they've looked this season, Lori, the body of work they have put together to get to this point. Some big wins on their resume, on their home field. Van Zanten had the shot blocked. 
You certainly sense they would be the team that would, I think, feel a little more disappointed if this one does end in a draw. Oh, certainly. Playing at home, senior night, the, the amount of tact that they have. You know, we saw it in the first 20, 25 minutes of the first half, and then good adjustments for Duke, and then the go-ahead goal for Michelle Cooper, and a special play from the front runner from the Blue Devils. But this entire half, ball in the box, bounces, nearly turning into something. Well, case in point right here, this entire <laughs> half. I mean, listen, credit to Duke. They get the they get the go-ahead goal with Raider, and then it's equalized from Notre Dame. But the majority of this game has been played in the attacking half of Notre Dame. And they continue to push players forward and show their strength, whether it's Wingate getting in behind, then Zanton out of the midfield. Another corner delivered from Albert. Van Zant knew right where she wanted to put it. It's put back in the box. Yeah, the Irish have been on the attack certainly much of this second half. It's been a few moments of brilliance in the attack, really. Raider had one of them for Duke. Cooper had one in the first half, nearly had a, a chip sneak in in this second half, not for the heroics of Mackenzie Wood and goal. Well, I like the idea from Raider, just tries to put her foot on it, doesn't rush it. The ball is picked off, but she was looking to try to play out and for them to swing the ball around. And, you know, we heard Robbie Church say about that, or say that coming in to halftime. They needed to be able to get a hold of the ball more in their own attacking half. And haven't seen a ton of that because they haven't been able to get that many players forward, higher up the field. It's something, whether they're gonna play in a four back, this hybrid three, five back at times, can they take their game? Good ball on the ground from Cooper. A chance with a touch. Pluck. Well played by Wood, who wasted no time coming off her line, and breaking up the play. Well, it's an early read from Wood, and well done from the Notre Dame goalkeeper because it's Ray, excuse me, it's Pluck that gets through this time. Another slotted ball on the ground to find Pluck in behind and. Would have had a good look on goal if Wood hadn't had a heads up play to make herself big and the opportunity much smaller. Four saves on the night for Wood. A career high tying eight for Ruthie Jones on the other end in goal. Now, if the score holds, I'll give you another quick look here. This is what our ACC tournament bracket looks like for you. Get that Duke-Virginia matchup. That would be in Charlottesville. Notre Dame would be hosting here against Pitt. And then North Carolina, Florida State, your one and two seeds. Tar Heels bouncing back after not making the ACC tournament for the first time ever last year. Well, you get the feeling anything could happen here in these final three minutes and change. Notre Dame has taken 18 shots in the match. That is a season high for any opponent against Duke. Two goals to show for it. Both of those game tying goals after Duke had taken the lead. Had goals less than two minutes apart, 71st and 73rd in this second half, Cat Raider. Put Duke back out in front in the 71st. Now Duke, if they can manage to find a way to get the win here, that changes their seed to a three. They would then take on Pitt, team they beat in the regular season one to nothing. Notre Dame would get Virginia. One of their big marquee wins of the season. one nothing for the Irish on their home field against UVA back in September. Right. 
Everybody urging Olivia Wingate to go. It'll be Notre Dame throw. Notre Dame is able to find a late game winner here, by the way. Those matchups we showed you, those would still hold in terms of Notre Dame taking on Pitt and Virginia taking on Duke. I am being told that that one seed could be affected, however, by a Notre Dame win. Could see the Seminoles take the top spot. We'll crunch all those numbers for you after, and you have to be careful here. This has got to be at least a yellow card. And you certainly hope that's all it is, and it is at the moment. <laughs> Tempers flaring on the field. Gatino booked. Under a minute to play. She commits the foul, but that was after the whistle had been blown for the Duke infraction, so it's still Notre Dame ball. But it's been good refereeing this game, allowing the players to play. There's the initial foul on Piper for Duke. Yeah, the play, the, the foul, the yellow card on Catino happened after that. She pushed the Duke player to the ground. Catino still looking for it. Duke also picking up a yellow card on that last play. Cooper in the box. 30 seconds to go in this one. Shot from outside the area, top of the net, and Notre Dame will hustle to try to get the ball down the field in a hurry. Countdown is on here at Alumni Stadium, and it looks like this one will indeed end in the 2-2 draw. Hard fought battle for both Duke taking the lead twice, Notre Dame having an answer twice. Yeah, hard fought, fought match, as you said it, Jen, and good end in action. As we said, both teams are going to be able to take away some real important details headed into postseason play. Well, I said that there had never been a three way tie for the ACC regular season title and Notre Dame, despite an onslaught of shots, unable to make it happen this season either. They get the point. They cannot keep pace with North Carolina and Florida State. So there you go. That is what it looks like as we get set for those first round matchups. The game time still to be determined, so keep an eye out for those. But Virginia Duke, Notre Dame Pitt to get us started in the ACC championship. Yeah, some fun matches and so, some critical matches. And we always talk about the fine margins in the ACC and we're going to see it even more so in these games who deals with the travel who can deal with uh, the momentum of playing at home the upsets but congratulations and big achievements for North Carolina and Florida State to be able to get that first round by and then find themselves in the semifinals. So Duke and Notre Dame playing to a 2-2 draw to finish up the regular season in ACC women's soccer. Well, we still have our postseason to go, but it's about to be basketball season. That's coming up for you next. For Lori Lindsay, I'm Jen Hildreth. It is nothing but net coming your way after the break.